Church, it stirs up the love between us. It creates something. It, it bonds us together. It makes us one. It makes us a team to stand strong. Amen. 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 Believe it or not, even though we talk about one another, don't let anybody else talk about us. <laughs> Amen. I can talk about you, but they can't. Number two, God's commandment says not to forsake assembling together as we see the day approaching. We see God's return coming. We know it's coming. We can look at the church, how powerful and things are happening and, and moving quick. Edie's mom is 96 years old. She goes to church four to five times a day, a week. She won't miss it. She has to call the 911 to take her. She's going. <laughs> we don't go because of people. That's your biggest mistake. If you go because of others there, you'll quit. You go because you obey God. You obey his word, his truth, his promise. I have a text on my phone that says why somebody's not coming to church. They blamed us. That's the wrong reason. We come here because he obeyed. I have a brother that loves the Lord. He's almost 80. He loves the Lord. He reads the Bible. He studies daily. I'm telling you. But he's missing the self-assembling together with the saints of God. He's missing out. He has issues that would be solved if he was here. So I tell him, you know, you're disobeying God's word. He goes, I know I am. But I said, you still stay home. Yes. Bad, huh? Psalms 84.10 says, a day in your court is better than a thousand. One day coming together with this worshiping and this people and the dancing and whether you believe, man, I tell you, there's nothing like it. God inspires you to move on and God inspires you to, to, to be different. David said, 84.4 says, blessed are those that dwell in the house of the Lord. There's blessings beyond measure. Yes, amen. All of us that are sitting here that's been here a long time, you never quit. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Yes. You believe in the end. Yes. You believe God will fulfill his promises. Amen. God has been faithful to Edie and I. We have been faithful to God's house all of our life. Amen. Years ago, we had a problem in the church. They were having division. And I walked out of the church. What they did is they kicked my sister out of church. Now that I got older, she deserved to be kicked out. But when I was young, I couldn't see it. I walked out in front of the church, faith assembly. And Edie came out. We were newly married. She grabbed me. She goes, where are you going? I go, I'm done with that church. She goes, you get in that church and sit down and shut up. I went in and sat down and shut up. <laughs> See, she had, that, that's, where we, that's where we bind together. That's where we help each other. We, we encourage one another to make it. We encourage one another to serve God. I was supposed to do two or three minutes. I'm trying to do it. It's a place of refuge in time of trouble. Amen. I'm going to tell you, we've all been through troubles. You don't run from God's house. You run there because there's a bunch of people that already went through what you've been through. Amen. And they'll help you get through it. It's a place of instruction. We get plenty of instruction, don't we? It's doing it. And this is what I really like. It's a comfort in your old age. Psalms 92, 12. I want to read this. It says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like the cedars in Lebanon. Them roots are deep. 
The winds come, the storms come, the talk comes, the gossip comes, and they stop, they stand. It says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of their God. When you're planted in the right soil, and you're planted where you should be, not the rocks, not all that, but if you're planted where God has put you, stay there because I guarantee you, you will flourish. And when you flourish, you will produce people like you, which is like the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And it said, they shall still bear fruit in their old age. That's me. I'm old. Look at me. Somebody just told me how old I look. It said they shall be fresh. That's in God. You'll have a freshness in God. You can kick up your heels. You can move in God. Because there's freshness in God's house forevermore. There's freshness forevermore. And it said you shall flourish. And what you're going to flourish is right up there. The fruit of the Spirit's going to be working in you. You might not have them all. You might only have two or three right now. But stay there. You're going to get them all. Galatians 5, 22. You're going to get them all. That's why it's important to be in God's house. You never know. When I wake up in the morning, I'm afraid to miss. I'm afraid to miss God's house because that might be the day where he comes and reigns. He might fall afresh that morning and I won't be there. So I get up and I seek God and I said, Lord, I'm waiting for you to come and move like you did and acts. The Holy Ghost fell. He blew upon the dry bones of Ezekiel and things began to move. Those dry bones laid and nothing was happening. But when God came, things happened. And that's why I go to church. I'm going to share a little bit about why I go to church. We were a church-going family, uh, very faithful. That was just the, the teaching at the time. My parents decided we're going to be faithful, we're going go to we're gonna be involved, we're going to get involved. So we, you know, tagged along. Of course, we went along. So that's all I've ever known. But of course, the biggest difference is when you make him your personal savior, your personal relationship with him. And so, you know, about in my teens, 15, 16, 17, I started to realize what was happening, what, that God was real, that I could touch him, that I could know him. And as I started getting older, you know, college, all those things, I realized that I needed the church. I realized that I needed the guidance. I needed the counsel. There was something just needed and I got that from the church. It, and I found out later, after teaching and things, that it was a powerful world, word called quanania, which means a love, a strong, deep bond, a brotherhood. And I found that in the church, everything he mentioned, the scriptures. Um, and I can remember, you know, like he said, we've all been through the same stuff. I remember going through hard times. I remember going, being here and having a, a very hard time with this, you know, situation or whatever. And I knew on Saturdays they would come up and I knew Mr. Barnes was going to be there. I knew Mr. Kinsey was going to be there and they were going to be working on the ranch. Back then we did a lot of working. And I go, okay, I'm going. Saturday morning I got up. I, I still remember driving up that hill. Just my heart crushed, torn, load, heavy load on my shoulders. 
And I got up that hill, walked in that barn, and guess who's there? Mr. Barnes, Mr. Kenser, Christina, come here, give me, let, we need to get you some. Did you know that we have water from the well? We have well water. Oh, taste this. It's so good. Mix it with tang. Put the Kool-Aid in it. Mix it all up. It's delicious. Oh, add some crystal light. Let's make some hamburgers. Come on. Uh, Christina, hey, come over here. You know, we're, we're help us out with this. And let me tell you, that was what I needed at the time of my need was that fellowship. They didn't know what I was going through. I didn't sit down and, you know, talk to them for hours. It was just, that's what I needed. And I got that, and I've always gotten that. And um, those are, I mean, I could tell stories and stories, but it's the love that I feel when I walk in these doors, the excitement I feel working together. I love working with the people of God. Um, so much. That's one of the reasons I go to church. And I remember Mr. Kinser just talking this message. When I was uh, 17 years old, it was stay in the boat. And that impacted me. Christina, just stay committed. Let's see what God can do. He'll get you through any storm. Just stay right in there. Hang in there. And that's what I did. And I found out it works. So my motto is, when something's working, don't change it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I don't have the wisdom as uh, my brother Tony here because he's a preacher, but I deal with facts. After 9-11, if you remember, um, because we got hit with the terrorists. The federal government opened up a training camp south of uh, Albu uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, so I was fortunate, I was one of the officers that uh, from around the country to attend this camp and to see how they make the bombs and how they do this, the IEDs and everything. The point is that uh, I don't care what field you're in, you need to be trained and schooled. That's what a church is. If we Christians don't come to church, how are you going to grow in the Holy Spirit? If you don't come to church, how are you going to show the love to, to, to fellow men? And, and how are you going to give testimony to other people, Muslims or others, and say that we have the love of Christ? How are you going to do that? You don't even attend church. You're a hypocrite. You're a phony. You know what I'm saying? When you, when, you, when you witness and you say, I have the love of Christ, I, I read the Bible and this and that, so Tony's right. It, and you, you just, anybody can read the Bible. Or, and, uh, wh why did they send me to school? I know how to read. Just give me the book and uh, I'll just go home and, uh, and open the text and read and everything. Why did they send me? They spend the whole week, hotels, rent the cars and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, all these things because they wanted to train us to be the best in our field. And, and Christian life is the same way. If, if you want to be a real Christian, and our goal is to, uh, uh, to uh, achieve, uh, you need to be here because why do we even have a pastor? pastor gets his wisdom from the Lord, and he, and he preaches. And, and what do you think? He, he's doing this for a hobby? I mean, uh, I hope not. Uh, if he's just doing for his pay, I hope not. Then he's a hypocrite himself. I mean, if you really, really love the Lord and, you, and you're a true Christian and, and, and you're here, you want the Holy Spirit to be, you want to be filled and you want to grow. I deal with facts. When they, take me, when they took me to this training camp and they said, look, this is the way it is. Fact number one, fact number two, fact number three. And this is how uh, evil destroys mankind. So we come here to fight evil. And if you're going to fight evil, this is your training camp. You have to be trained. When you go out there, you better know what you're talking about. You better know what you're saying. So as a lieutenant, when I was there and I start training police officers, I, gotta, I have to have the answers. The, these rookies, they're coming out of the academy. They're looking up to me. I'm going to give you one last uh, story. 20 years, after 20 years in my, uh, in my field, I took this rookie. I said, Tommy, come with me. Uh, we got a DOA call. 
He goes, no, no, Lieutenant, uh, I never seen a dead body. I said, come on, don't worry about it. Come on, come with me. Let's go. We're going to DOA. So uh, I said, just follow. I, whatever I tell you, just follow. You got to start investigating this and that. Here's the point. The coroner's office came. He said, Lieutenant, can I uh, did you finish your investigation? I said, yeah, we did. I said, you can take the body. It was a natural, uh, he had a bad heart and everything. It wasn't any foul play. Nobody killed him or anything like that. He says, uh, you missed something. The coroner's guy, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't tell a lieutenant I missed something. I said, I've been doing this over 20 years. What do you mean I missed something? He goes, come here. He goes, get on your knees. He took a little flashlight. A little flashlight. He goes, yeah, turn the body over. And there was bite marks all over his back. And, and I checked his back. Now I'm checking for, for checking for a knife, some kind of a incision, uh, like somebody stabbed him, whatever, and everything. He goes, no, he goes, you missed it. He goes, look. He goes, this body's been here for hours, uh, over a day. He goes, this is all cockroach bites. And I said, wow. I said to myself, after 20 years, I never knew this. Here's a lieutenant after 20 years, and I, I picked up a lot of bodies. I never knew. And this guy taught me something. And he's not even a cop. He's just, he just picks up the body. He's a, you know, he's a delivery boy. And, and in front of the rookie, I, like, you know, he gets a little insulted. You know, he's telling uh, in front of the rookie, I'm trying to teach him. And he's, this guy's telling me. So I go, Tommy, come here. Tommy, you got to put this in your investigation. you got to put this in report. See how many hours that this body's been here and everything. You see, the point is, it's a learning experience. Because we face challenges throughout life, you need to learn. You need to learn the Bible. You need to learn uh, how to grow. And you, know, you need to show love for each other. Amen. I've been here on Mount Side five years now. You know how much work and effort I put into it? I mean, it's a lot of work here. Why do you think the Pastor Dave says I'm the number one Christian here? No, 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 I'm not number one. You mean Pastor Dave is just saying that to make me feel good? 